Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a MS, multiple sclerosis related video. I realise these aren't for everybody but I do have quite a big audience for MS stuff so if this isn't your thing then you can just click out and I'll, we'll see you on the next video. But I have talked about doing this video for a while and I really wanted to go through what my symptoms were before I was diagnosed. So things to look out for and indications that you might have MS. Now of course I am not saying that if you have one or all of these symptoms that you have MS, that just simply isn't true. There are other conditions and even vitamin deficiencies and stuff like that that can cause the same symptoms. But if you're having these symptoms then I think that you should go and see your doctor. So if you don't have a diagnosis, and you've been having a few of these symptoms or one of these symptoms then you should definitely get to the doctor and just get checked out and see what they say and of course i am not a medical professional so i will advise as best i can having looked at websites and done my own research but of course i'm not a medical professional so please do your own research and see a doctor don't take my word for things if that makes sense so a bit of a background just in case you don't know i was diagnosed with ms in March of 2017 having had about six months of investigations into what was going on in my body um, but my neurologist will agree with me and we think that I've had MS for about 10 years so I've had it for quite a while and I had a lot a lot of symptoms for a long time that were really subtle that I didn't necessarily think it didn't ring alarm bells I just kind of thought oh, that's weird um but looking back I should have been writing all of these things down because when you connect them all up they give you MS so yeah I will start with one of the first things that I noticed years ago and I mean years and years and years ago and I did go to my doctor for every single one of these episodes um so don't assume that your doctor is going to link all of these things up because they just don't sometimes. I The first thing I noticed, sorry, I'm looking at my phone because I've got them written on my phone. First thing I noticed was numb patches. So I started having numb patches maybe when I was about like 19 or 20, something like that. And I just thought it's a trapped nerve and, you know, maybe I need some physio. Yeah, I did have a physio session for a trapped nerve and needless to say that did not work. I also tried some neurological drugs to stop the, basically it blocks the signal from your brain to your nerve in the hopes that it would stop the symptoms. So I think I, ha I had a numb patch on my back and I'd had a numb patch on my arm as well and my doctor thought it was one particular nerve that was trapped in my neck maybe. Um, that was causing both of those things. We know now it wasn't, but that's what he thought it was at the time. And so I tried physio, I tried these neurological drugs and they didn't work. And the drugs were addictive as well, so I just didn't want to be on them for very long. So I decided just to cut, come off them and I can't remember what they were called now. Yeah, so I decided to come off the drugs and just wait it out and see what happened. And about two months after I came off, those drugs um it went back to normal and I didn't have anything I thought great nerve has come out of wherever it was trapped sometimes you can get trapped nerves if like your muscles are inflamed and stuff and I was going to the gym a lot so um so when I came off them I thought nothing of it and then I had another episode I think a few months later where I had a numb patch and tingling skin as well and I've always had patches of like tingling skin. So I didn't really, again, think much of it. I just thought, that's weird, but you know, never mind. And I went to the doctor's and he said, oh, well, it's probably another trapped nerve. So I went away, a couple months later, it went and it wasn't a big deal. I just didn't think anything of it. Then a couple years later, I hadn't really had anything that was significant I maybe had had stuff that had come up but like I don't remember it um I started noticing because I was exercising that when I put my head to my chest like that I would have what I can describe as a guitar strum being pulled so if you've ever played a guitar or held a guitar or anything 
if you pluck one of the strings it will vibrate so how I describe it is a, having a guitar string right down your spine and when you put your head down like that your entire spine feels like it's vibrating like a guitar strum that is how I describe it so I don't know if other MS people will agree with me on that but that is what I would describe it it's like an electrical sensation as well um it's really hard to describe but that is the best I can do so I started having that and I had that god for over a year I think and I just didn't think anything of it I just thought eh that's weird I was at the gym doing stuff and I just thought it was weird I didn't really think anything of it I didn't think it was serious I did actually end up going to my doctor about that as well and he was not concerned <laughs> and that looking back now that's probably my most significant symptom that he should have been like hmm that's strange because it is something that I cannot pronounce obviously it is a well-known MS symptom and lots of people get it and he just didn't think it was anything serious and to be honest that doctor was a bit rubbish he didn't put two and two together he didn't even put one and six together of all the things that i've been going for but yeah he didn't so i went on my happy way not thinking anything of it he was like if it's still doing it in three months time come back and it went so as with ms different types of ms sometimes in most people if you've got relapsing and remitting MS you will have a symptom for a while and then it will subside and it will go away and that's what was happening and nobody thought anything of it another thing that I had that was noticeable in the build-up to be diagnosed I was at the gym I used to go to the gym a lot like I used to love the gym I used to go to like circuits class and then I do like two hours in the gym like a load of cardio and some weights I, I loved it I used to go all the time and the one thing that I couldn't do at the gym was run on a treadmill I just couldn't do it I could walk but I'd have to hold on to the side like you know how they've got like bars at the side I'd have to hold on or hold on to the front or something I could never run because I felt like I was going to fall off and my balance just wasn't right someone else I know has MS as well and they have fallen off the treadmill a few times and it's because of their balance and I didn't think anything of it really I just thought oh I really need to get the hang of this treadmill malarkey um, and I'm always the same on escalators and stuff like that my balance is just really really bad um so again didn't really think anything of it which is crazy like I'm saying all these things now and I'm like how did I not know but this is like six to eight years of symptoms um so it wasn't like they were all at once it was like really spread out so it was easy not to connect them um and then i think the only other thing was that i felt like things were more of an effort for me than they were for my friends so bearing in mind i was like my early 20s i shouldn't have struggled like getting up from the floor i shouldn't have struggled getting down to get things from the floor but i was and it was because when i was standing up i couldn't balance properly and i just felt a bit funny and i would feel really fatigued and it, it just wasn't right for a 20 something year old um so there was that and then when i got pregnant had sienna and then i was absolutely fine when i was pregnant which is common with ms then about three to six months after she was born i think it must have been three months after she was born because I got pregnant with Alba pretty quickly I think it was like seven months after Sienna was born I was pregnant with Alba so yeah I I, I was in town we were in town we went into town with the push chair and I got out of the car and I tried to walk up the street and I just went god I'm gonna have to stop I can't walk and Steve was like what do you mean you can't walk and I said I cannot walk like I literally can't walk and I felt like my hips were fighting against me like my legs just wouldn't move like I couldn't get the signal from my brain to my legs to make them move so I kind of shuffled along to the side of the road um side of the path and I stood there and I felt like an intense vibrating like an electrical sensation going from my feet to my hips and from then on I had numb and tingling lower legs 
like pins and needles basically you know when you fall like when you lie on your arm and or something and it gets pins and needles that feeling in both legs and my lower legs and it's it was up to sort of mid thigh when it first started and I found that quite scary so I went to my doctor and I could the thing with it was I couldn't walk for about five to ten minutes so I had to stop and rest and then I could slowly start walking again and I would still get the tingling and it was really bad when I stopped but I could propel myself and make myself go if that makes sense um whereas when I first started walking I would feel like I was dragging my legs because it was so hard to walk so that was the biggest thing that I thought shit something is not right here and I went to my doctor and I said oh I've got these weird feelings in my legs and I've also got these lumps on my lower back and that was another thing that had come up when I was pregnant that I thought that's weird um and I had lots of lower back pain and I've still got those now and they're still unexplained nobody knows what's going on so I think it's just a symptom of MS the lower back thing um but I don't know still but anyway with my legs she my doctor was amazing and she referred me to um for an MRI on my legs and when I got to the MRI appointment they said well it might not be your legs it might be your brain or it could be a spinal surgical emergency so we need to send you to A&E they sent me to A&E and they said well you've either got a brain tumor or you've got MS that's what we think um and I was just like oh my god okay so they referred me to neurology and when I got my appointment with neurology I didn't really know what to expect because they were either looking at like a brain tumor or MS which is really really terrifying um and when I went in they do these like tests with you so they do like balance tests and um reflex tests so they drag like a sharp thing up the bottom of your foot which is ugh, horrible um and they ask you to close your eyes and walk in a straight line and that was the thing which I all these balance issues I hadn't really noticed them until I was asked to do that test and I closed my eyes and I could not put one foot in front of the other without wanting to fall over and I was just like oh my god I can't believe I've been this bad without realizing it and he asked me to do a lot of other things and I couldn't do them and it was just quite shocking I think that I couldn't do it so I went away and they said well no I had an MRI they booked me an MRI and I had that that week and then they said right go away and we will see you in like a month or two you know we'll get your results and we'll see you in a month or two um and the I think like two days later they rang me and said you need to come in um we've had a cancellation you know don't worry we've just had a cancellation so I, I didn't really think anything of it but I went in and he said he, I basically sat down and he said do you know why you're here and I said well I assume it's for the results of my MRI and he said yeah you've got MS and I said oh right okay um that's fine because I, I was prepared for it like I pre prepared myself and I thought, well, it's either going to be MS or it's going to be a brain tumour. And I really don't want it to be a brain tumour. So I felt good that it was MS. I felt relieved. I felt like I, I wasn't going mad. I knew what, what was up. You know, I was pregnant currently. So there wasn't any treatment I could have at the time. But I felt like, okay, good, good. We know what it is so, so we can deal with it. And he showed me my MRI and I could not believe how many lesions and he couldn't believe how many lesions I had either. Lesions are basically where your myelin, basically it's demyelination, I can't say that word. I'll put a little thing up on the screen of what, what the word is but I'm really bad with the pronunciation. Um, anyway, it's where your myelin that is in your body it starts to deteriorate so it starts to affect your nerves and cause all sorts of problems like walking problems balance problems vision problems that kind of thing so he could he could not believe that i had been walking around relatively fine um in the grand scheme of things like it wasn't causing any issues like 
um, vision and like I, I wasn't in a wheelchair like you know the, he was surprised that I was so fine um, because I had four or five lesions in my brain and then I had a further 20 to 25 on my spine and the ones in your brain affect things like your cognitive ability and I'd, I have had some cognitive impairment um, so I had to go and see a neuro psychiatrist psychologist I can't remember but she did some tests with me on my basically answer a load of like grammar and spelling questions which I was in my element because I love stuff like that but and then maths questions which I wasn't so good at that but she basically I had the test and she said I can tell that you are intelligent and that you your grammar and your spelling and your English is really good and your maths is probably where you have struggled before I was like no that's really accurate and she said but you've definitely got some cognitive impairment where your results would be different had you not have had the impairment I don't know how she knows that but yeah there was some cognitive impairment anyway so my the way I process information is different now so before I could hear something pick it up like that and I'd be fine I'd, I'd be able to remember it do it so now if I hear something new I can remember it and retain it but it depends what the information is and I prefer to write things down and read things over and over again because it just sinks in a little better I don't know how to explain it it's just different so yeah um I think that's it I just wanted to go through my symptoms because I did it in my original MS video but that I also talked about my feelings about being diagnosed um and I wanted this to be more about the symptoms so I was diagnosed in March 2017 I had Lem Trada in September 2017 and I'll go into that in a different video about how I felt about being pregnant and stuff. I'm going to do like a pregnancy having kids MS video as well. Um, but yeah, it's I've had Lem Trada. It's been successful for me. There are lots of really serious side effects that, you know, there's things like thyroid disorders, blood disorders. There's, I have to have monthly blood tests now. Um, she comes to my house, which is lovely and just really nice. Um... But yeah, there's lots of things. MS has changed my life in lots of different ways. But I'm not scared. I feel good as well as I can feel. Um, yes, I've made some adjustments to my life. But I'm fine. What I want you to take away from this video is if you are having symptoms, and I will leave a list of MS symptoms in the description box below so you know exactly what they are because they are going to be different for everybody. I haven't had every single symptom that you can get for MS. But if you are having symptoms, then you have to see a doctor. Don't put it off. Don't say, oh, well, it's fine. It's just one of those symptoms, so I'll be fine. No, you need to go and see a doctor because you, early detection can help you have better treatment and be help the treatment be more effective because the more relapses you have the more advanced the disease becomes and the more irreversible the damage becomes so i have relapsing and remitting ms which means that i have relapses and then i largely recover from them um, and i feel relatively normal obviously it isn't it is an auto <laughs> it is an autoimmune condition so i do get fatigued and stuff like that as well which you're always going to have that and there are issues like muscle weakness things that stay with me like my tingly legs I've still got those tingly toes I still get restless leg syndrome really really badly and stuff like that but I, rec I, c I can walk I can talk I can see fine lots of things that I've had numb patches I've recovered from without issue so that's what relapse and remitting MS is. You kind of, you have a relapse and that relapse recedes and you are largely better. So yeah, if you are having any symptoms or anything like that, then please do just speak to your doctor. I will leave lots of links and information in the description below. My overall advice would just be to see your doctor and make sure you get things investigated and do not take no for an answer if you believe that something is wrong with you because you absolutely have to advocate for yourself and don't expect doctors to join the dots because they just don't unfortunately and they should but they don't 
um, because the NHS is overworked and overstretched and yeah the doctor's appointments are five minutes at a time and they don't necessarily have time to go into your history so you have to what I, what I think also really helps is make a list of every single episode that you have so any symptom that you have keep that medical history with you so then you can say to your doctor well I've had this this has come up but I'm concerned because I had that last year as well and it lasted for two months so if you've got all the dates then your doctor might go hmm actually that does require investigation and you're not just going from memory because you do forget things like I've just tried to tell you all that then I've forgotten bits so just look after yourself and make sure you get a diagnosis even though it is scary it is far better to know what you are dealing with so you can be treated so yeah Thank you so much for watching. Please do give me a little comment and give this video a thumbs up as well. And I would love it if you would subscribe. I'm going to do a pregnancy and MS having kids video soon as well. So I would love to see you around for that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Standing underneath the lights Looking to other sides tired snowflakes are